top officials of the United Nations have decried prejudice against Islam or the Muslims in general. As the call for separation and secession from Nigeria begins to get more stronger by the day, citing religious grounds and other issues by the southeast and the southwest uh, region of Nigeria, the United Nations have made some steps to, this, to step into the issue. But however, there is a new twist to the stepping in of the United Nations on this particular issue. Recall that Nam Kano had written to the United Nations sometime uh, in the past stating that the religious crimes that is being committed in the country is getting out of hand and he has termed the northerners as the ones who are responsible for the religious activities which are religious crises and um, killings that have been perpetrated by the people of the north even up until now citing the fulani headsmen the book haram issues as clear court examples the officials of the United Nations, including the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who spoke on Wednesday on the issue during a virtual, high-level virtual event to commemorate this year's International Day to Combat Islamophobia, said that they, they are worried about the growing uh, Islamophobia. The event came days after the United Nations Human Rights released a report indicating that suspicion, discrimination, and outright hatred towards Muslims had risen to endemic proportion. This has not gone down well with some of the people from the southeastern part of Nigeria and the southwestern part of Nigeria who are actually calling on the United Nations to do the needful since uh, the regions are no longer interested in being part of Nigeria. Citing the report, Guterres in a video message gave recent examples of Islamophobia to include disproportionate restrictions to include disproportionate restrictions on the ability of Muslims to manifest their beliefs. Other manifestations, according to him, are securitization of religious communities, limits on access to citizenship, socio-economic exclusion, and widespread stigmatization of the Muslim communities. Guterres added, Unfortunately, far too often, stereotypes are further compounded by elements of the media and some in positions of power. Let us also remember that many acts of intolerance and suspicion may not appear in official statistics, but those acts degrade people's dignity and our common humanity. He said, discrimination undermines human development, adding that it prevents people and societies from achieving their full potential. Besides discrimi discrimination, there are policies of assimilation seeking to wipe out the cultural and religious identity of minority communities, he said. Guterres urged countries to push for policies that fully respect human rights and religious, cultural, and unique human identity. He also called for political, cultural, and economic investments to strengthen social cohesion and combat religious bigotry. Also in a video message, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Ambassador Volkan Boskir, described as a deeply personal attack, any form of discrimination, including based on religion or belief. Boskir urged member countries to recommit to relevant international instruments, including the UN Charter 
and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. He expressed hope that this would give birth to national laws to end Islamophobia, hate speech, and hate crimes. The General Assembly Chief, the General Assembly Chief added that protecting people from extreme from extremism required a global strategy that includes defeating all forms of violent ideologies. Mr. Miguel Moratinos, High Representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, spoke in similar vein. Despite progress made in building bridges of understanding through the promotion of intercultural and interfaith dialogue, manifestations of anti-Muslim hatred persisted and morphed into different forms. Islamophobia cannot be seen in isolation from the worrying increase in xenophobia and hate speech against minorities, including immigrants and other faith communities. He said, Moratinos said, mutual respect, interfaith harmony, and peaceful coexistence could be achieved with broad space for everyone to practice their rituals of their religions or beliefs freely and safely. With the way things are going right now, guys, do you still think that the United Nations has the willpower to divide Nigeria or to grant independence to the regions that are asking for secession or even with what they are saying? Do you still think that with all these, the United Nations, as it were, are going to do justice to this referendum call? These are my observations and, uh, you know, the world, probably there might just be a hidden agenda to Islamize the world. I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. Because if the United Nations is pushing this agenda, you know, coming out to say that um, uh, that uh, they are worried about the growing Islamophobia, then they are not talking about the you know the decline of uh, Christianity in some part of the country, but they are talking about Islam. Then it shows to a very large extent that something is wrong somewhere. Well, it's what it is, guys. I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. It's just an observation. Well, drop by at the comment section. Let's know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations, and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the other news. Thank you, and bye for now.